Good morning to you, dear friends. It's a Monday morning, the start of a new week. It's cold, but nothing like the Word of God to encourage us and to find everything we need for this week. I pray that as we've gone through the devotional series on the, on the Psalms, that you have found a real encouragement from a real God who cares and also hearing the heart's cry of real people facing real circumstances. Today I have the privilege of doing Psalm 23. It's one of the most well-known psalms in all of the Bible. Won't you turn with me there and let us read together. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me and your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This iconic psalm uses two great images, that of the Lord as a shepherd who cares for his sheep and that of the Lord as a host who cares for his guest. These images reveal the nature of God as a shepherd who leads and cares for his people and as God as a host preparing a meal for his people. As, God, as God's people encounter his majesty, and faithfulness in the way he cares for, loves, and lavishes hospitality upon his covenant people. It produces praise and worship in the hearts of those who trust him. The first part is God as a shepherd. The Bible regularly refers to God as a shepherd. It says in Revelation 7 verse 17, For the Lamb that is in the midst of the throne shall be their shepherd, and shall guide them, unto fountains of waters of life, and God shall wipe away every tear from their eyes. Just as a shepherd cares for his sheep, so the Lord cares for the needs of his people, protecting them and leading them. The term want implies a lack of something or a need, and so the Lord provides us with everything that we need for this life and for godliness. Green pastures and still waters represent places of rest, abundance, safety, and provision. It is the Lord doing all the work here. If you look, it says, He makes me, He restores me, He leads me, He prepares a table, He anoints me. And us as His people resting in God's faithful care. All we need to do is to receive and to trust in Him. Here the Lord leads his faithful people in his righteous paths for the sake of his glorious character, so that the world may know that he is good, gracious, compassionate, and abounding in steadfast love. Even though we may walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we will fear no evil, for the Lord is with you, and his rod and staff, they comfort you. Verse 14 is so real in a world suffering with the shadow of the coronavirus, which has brought devastation, suffering, and death all around us. You may be living in fear, but his rod and staff, they comfort you. His staff supports us, and as a shepherd leans on his staff, so we can lean and rest on him. His staff guides us in the darkness to safe pasture. His rod protects us when we are lost in the confusion of this world and symbolizes his love for us and that we belong to the Good Shepherd. God himself prepares a lavish meal for us as his guests in the midst of our enemies and even as we pass through the valley of tribulation and suffering. The table, the cup, the oil represent the Lord as host setting the most amazing feast before us. 
Our enemies and the suffering and the things of this world are absolutely powerless to prevent us from enjoying God's generous hospitality. Because of the goodness and mercy and love of the shepherd towards us, we are assured that his grace and faithfulness will keep us all the days of our lives. We can take great encouragement that for those who trust in the work of the Lord as their shepherd, he will carry us from this life and into eternity with him in his presence forever. The gospel truth of Psalm 23 is that we all, like sheep, have gone astray and wandered away into a deep, deep darkness. Every one of us has at one time followed our own ways, and we've become hopelessly lost and without hope in the world. Some of us listening to this this morning might be lost in the darkness of sin, hurt and fear. Jesus is the good good shepherd, in Psalm 23, who came to search and rescue and save you from the darkness and lead you to joyful pastures. You may be feeling so insignificant or even rejected, but the Lord sees you. He answers you and he cares for you, even in the midst of weakness and suffering and shame that you may be feeling. Our great reward in Psalm 23 is that as we seek God, He finds us and that all the promises are fulfilled in the very person of Jesus Christ. In John chapter 10 verse 3 to 5, Jesus said, The sheep hear His voice and He calls His own sheep by name and leads them out. When He has brought out all His own, He goes before them and the sheep follow Him for they know his voice. A stranger they will not follow, but they will flee from him, and they do not know the voice of strangers. Further on in verse 8, it says, All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved, and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Here in John chapter 10, we see that the sheep hear the voice of Jesus. They know his voice and they follow him. The sheep don't follow the voice of strangers. Think of little children. They learn the voice of their parents who love them from a young age. And they don't easily follow strangers, but they respond to the comforting and trusted voice of their parents. There are many voices in this world, my friends, and most of them are not good. They could be the voice of fear, the voice of discouragement, the voice of failure, the voice of condemnation, or the voice telling you that you are not good enough, or the voice that says God does not love you. Or the voice that says God is not good in a world that is suffering. All these are the voice of our real enemy, the devil. The Bible says that he has been lying since the beginning of the world. And he comes only to steal, to destroy and kill. His plan is to get you so confused, fearful and deceived that you can't hear the voice of truth. My dear friends, which voice are you listening to? The true voice is the voice of the Good Shepherd, Jesus Christ. Our God came to give us abundant life and lead us to good and safe pasture. Jesus calls us to a full, delightful, meaningful and joyful life with Him as His people. He has not called us to doom and gloom or just miserable survival. The Good Shepherd lays down His life for the sheep. Jesus came as the shepherd who gave up his life as ransom on the cross to redeem us from the darkness and to bring us into eternal life with God. He saved us from destruction and reconciled us through his sacrifice and resurrection into eternal fellowship with the Father. Ephesians 2 verse 12 to 13 says, Remember that at one time, You were separated from Christ, alienated from the covenants of promise, 
having no hope and without God in the world. But now, in Christ Jesus, you who were once far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. I remember when I was in grade 7, my dad and I climbed Cathedral Peak in the Drakensberg. What started as a sunny, clear day ended in rain, thick mist and thunder as we approached the summit of the peak. I remember we lost our way. So my dad told me to stay and went ahead of me to find the path. I would call out for him to hear his voice. The scariest moment was when in the darkness I could no longer hear his voice. But then moments later I heard his voice in the mist calling out to me. I felt such love and joy and safety hearing his voice in that moment. And then he appeared and I ran to him and he hugged me. I then followed him on the right path. Can you hear the voice of the Good Shepherd, Jesus Christ, calling you to come to him today?